Welcome back to Nightcap Chat, the pop culture podcast to talk all things comic books, video games, movies, TV shows, and more. Today, we are talking our favorite and least favorite costume changes within the world of comic books. I'm Blade O'Neill. I'm Ken Brown. I'm Lance O'Neill. And of course, before we dive into it, just want to thank everyone for taking the time to like, share, listen, subscribe, and show your support for Nightcap Chat. Without you guys, we wouldn't be here. Thank you all so much. And thanks for bearing with us last week. Uh, we, we released the episode just a little bit late, and that's my fault. I, I take full uh, responsibility for that. Uh, I was recording an audiobook, and I worked three days, like all day, every day, just to, to make sure I delivered it on time. Uh, but I did, and I will share that audiobook with you all soon. And also, I think I'm going to do a giveaway for that audiobook because I I might be getting some free codes for that for that audiobook on on Audible or something. I don't know. I don't know the details yet. So uh, stay tuned for that. You can follow me at Blade O'Neill on Instagram and Twitter, and Blade O'Neill V O on Facebook. But we got a fun. Yeah, you're, you look like oh, you want well, to say you something, plug Ken. before Ken. <laughs> it was part of my excuse. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or not, not an excuse. Just there, there are no excuses. I was just uh, being real with, uh, with what happened there. Uh, that, is, that is awesome. I mean, I said, too, it's like, I know how hard you were working on that last week. Remember, you know, you like, called me a couple times and going, man, dude, I'm still doing this. I need a break. <laughs> Yes. Because your voice was tired. I go, are you okay, Blade? Oh, going, yes. That's oh right. God, I dude. called you and my oh, voice, voice was shot. Tired. Uh-huh. Yeah. And how how shot was my voice? Because, like, I did an extra long recording session that day. And I had a client meeting to juggle with that, too. And I was just like, ah, ah. I was like, I'm, I, I'm sincere, you know. But <laughs> just bear with me here. You're the hardest working man in front of a microphone. Uh, well, I, I don't know about that. But but thank you. I, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. I, yeah, um, he 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 also called me too when he was working on on that too. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's right. Oh, this is a, you should. This is completely this, different. I was I don't know. I was you know I was at home watching my daughter. Okay, my my voice you know, was my, not my, shot. That's that's not the story here. Daughter, you know, and um, my wife, you know, she's just finished working, and I get a call from Blade, and he's like, "I, I need your help. I need you to come over." I'm like, "What's what's the matter?" I'm thinking like. <laughs> the worst like i'm like oh my gosh something happened i'm like like what do you need help with he's like i got something stuck in my ear i was like I was like excuse me he's like i got like there's i think a q-tip is stuck in my ear i was like what so i was like he's like i need you to come over i was like can you just come here and he's like i don't have a car right now i'm like all right so i had to go tell my wife hey i can you watch the baby i know you just kind of home from you're done with work but I have to go help my brother <laughs> who got a Q-tip stuck in his ear. <laughs> so I go over his house and after digging through his ear for a good 10 minutes, didn't find anything. I think it's all good. I hope I, we think it was just a defective Q-tip or something. I don't know, but um, crisis was averted. But yeah, that was a fun, embarrassing. I was embarrassed for him when he called me. <laughs> that story actually continued just like a couple hours ago today because I, I was cleaning oh, out my God. ear again <laughs> and I was like, oh, wow, like this Q-tip's really loose to my ear and I look and the Q-tip head was gone and I was like, oh my gosh, did this Q-tip head fall off in my ear? <laughs> so I, just, I had my wife look at my other, and this was the other ear now. <laughs> And so she looked in there and also nothing. So I guess I had two defective Q-tips in here. So like long story you, short. You, you, you would think that you'd be looking at your Q-tips before you put That's what my wife says. Like, why aren't you looking? I was like, well, I'm going to now. Because <laughs> this, this is... Tw- in the dark. <laughs> this is twice in less than a week. Is there like a mouth inside your ear? Is it like that that, that like anime yum, yum, with, yum, the, yum. with the, the, the mouth on the hand? Oh, what's that? Um, Not V. Uh, Vampire Hunter D. Yeah. Man. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that happened. <laughs> Pretty mighty earwigs there, dude. Right. No, no kidding. I like, I don't know if I like, like, can I feel something in my ear? Like, I don't know. I, I took so many pictures and videos of the blade's ear to show him, like, I don't see anything. 
Yeah. And if you guys want those, you can get it on our OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> blades, blades, hairy earlobe. <laughs> or not earlobe. What's the what's the little thing? The uh, your ear canal. Yeah, but the little is it like a tragus or what's what's this thing called? A, a dyth dyth dyth. No, 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 tragus. Right? I don't know. Whatever the little the little nub thing is. Anyway, doesn't matter. <laughs> We got awesome. a great, we got a great show for you tonight. <laughs> We're all ears. Buddy. We're all ears <laughs> oh. oh my goodness! Yes, um, I I don't have a good way of segue segueing from my ears. Well, to, uh, speaking of her. cotton, yeah. let's talk about costumes. Yeah, there you go. That's a <laughs> that's know. a good one. One hundred percent cotton costumes. Yeah. Yeah, or, you know, unstable molecules, you know, because obviously that's what I was cleaning my ears with. Uh-huh. Um, so so we've been thinking, I was thinking, you know, today, you know, like there, there's so many costume changes and some of them are great. Some of them are iconic and some of them are like, eh, can we go back? Um, and so, I mean, there, there, there's a few things and, and some of them might be obvious what we're going we're gonna to bring up here. Um, and some people have more than one great costume change. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm going to kick it right off with right where I want to start. Yeah. I'm going to get this out of my system right now. Um, I love Dazzler's first costume. You know, we got our, our disco queen, right? Uh, I believe her first costume change was her eighties, you know, blue short hair costume. And although it's not as good as, um, you know, her classic costume, like I think it's pretty cool. And I think Dazzler just always has great costumes. Like even her ultimate costume um, where she's like punk rock. I mean, come on, like for, for the kind of mutant that she is and she's a singer. I, I love all these variants of, of Dazzler. I mean, what do you guys think? Do you, do you agree? Do you disagree? I don't like the Jazzer size costume. You don't like it. Okay. All right. That's fine. <laughs> all right. It's the it. weak one. It's the weak one, right? It's the, the weak one. Of the... I mean, I really thought she was going to teach me aerobics where I was going to save the day when I saw her in that costume. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. And, and Beyonder was all for her, though. Remember, like, the Beyonder, that was the one lady he chose when he came down to Earth in Secret Wars 2. Is he wanted the affections of Dazzler. So yep. must have been doing something right with that costume because, you know, the Beyonder's only human interest was the dazzler which i thought was kind of strange wow. speaking of a guy that went through multiple costume changes sure that'd be and not all of them good. Super Wolf here. yeah well that's that's really interesting because in one of the what ifs that we brought up um when like what if dazzler was a herald of galactus galactus chooses dazzler out of out of everyone on earth for this particular situation so so what's the deal with Dazzler that she's getting chosen by all these like cosmic beings for all these arbitrary reasons, you know? Yeah. Well, she's a rock star, I guess. I I guess I so. Know. But I I love Dazzler. I just wanted to kick off um kick off with that. Uh yeah, well, her her blue costume is almost like a cap like a Captain Marvel uh looking it has like that star thing going on. It's Interesting. Like, I didn't even think like about that. it like that. I guess you could be part Cree during that time frame, I guess you could say. Oh, no, no, thanks. I let's just, I want to keep her a mutant, you know? Yeah. Like, I like my rock star mutant. Uh, hopefully, we get Dazzler the movie, the movie. See, I was yeah. very specific, you know, maybe, gotcha. maybe someday. Cause da- That's a graphic. Dazzler the movie is a graphic novel. Yeah. yeah. So if we do Dazzler the movie, the movie, which yes. is a graphic novel that they wanted to do a movie, but they the movie version of the graphic novel that's based on the movie that they wanted to do. Whew. That's, that's kind of a, mind blowing. That's a cut. That's a, is that a deep cut? I don't know. It's, it's some kind of cut. Uh, okay. What, what else we got? <clears throat> um, well, I guess I'll, uh, I'll go with the, uh, one that has developed over the years, and the newest one I think I hate. So, I'm gonna go with. How do I how do I say this? I guess Ms. Marvel Carol Danvers costumes. It's the Carol Danvers costumes. Okay. I guess because like I don't want to. Oh, what Ms. Marvel? You know, what I mean, there's. So you know, you had the original with the little, the the red and blue with the the midriff cut. 
you know, mm-hmm. it was a great costume, in my opinion. I think it's her second best costume, if not the best one. Okay. And then they kind of got rid of the uh, the midriff and kind of just had a whole costume, which was good. But my favorite has to be the Warbird costume. The black with the gold lightning bolt and the and the the gold thigh high whatever it is you know boots that she's wearing. Okay. Um, and then the 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 newest one, I'm just not. I don't know. I'm just not a fan of it. Like it, it it's very Captain Marvel-y, but it, it's to me, it's just not the one that's kind of like the MCU costume. Is that yeah. the one you're referring to? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's just like whatever. It's Nothing cool or special or flashy. It's just like, I don't know. To me, it's just boring. Yeah. I can do it. Yeah, it's I like can do it. Just, it's very, uh, how would you say? It's like very standard issue looking Captain Marvel right now where yeah. it's just like, it's, uh, yeah, it's not, I don't know. I know what you mean, dude. It's like, it's, it's nothing that spectacular. I said to you, I think my favorite too was the, the Miss Marvel costume right before she became Captain Marvel. I mean, it went back to her original look, which I thought was, I guess it was her second look, actually. Her first look was a little bit of a hybrid between, like, what she's doing now and her original costume, but it's a full right. cool body costume on her now. Right. And, but that second costume, I think, is by far, you know, what really made her break out is a superhero character that was, like, the Wonder Woman of the Marvel Universe in a way. Oh, yeah. Right. Because like that, She Hulk, She Hulk. Do you know what I mean? But when I thought of Miss Marvel, I thought of her as like technically, if there's someone that's at one woman level in the Marvel universe, it was Carol Danvers. Oh yeah. And and now I see her more as a soldier rather than as a hero. Do you know what I mean? Which is mm. kind of weird saying that. It's like that she's always the first line of defense, which is great. But at the same time, it's kind of lost that that element of I don't know. It's just a like just that that special element of her uniqueness. She doesn't feel as unique as she used to. I guess is the best way to put it. Yeah, because it's it's like more of just like okay, this is what all the Cree wear, as mm-hmm. opposed to like a superhero costume. You know. Yeah. And, and that's She's, fine. It's not. It's definitely not the worst costume. You know, change ever. No, for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, th- there is something very classic about that that Warbird costume. You know. Yeah, that's the first time I saw her was in the Warbird costume in the mm-hmm. Iron Man comic. Yeah. That totally. costume is awesome. All right, Ken, what do, you, what do you got? What do you got? We got first. What's on your I've mind? got like a few different things. Like I, okay. like I was, you know, it's easy for me to say the black and white suits. I talk about like every other episode. So yeah. I'm going to steer away from the black and white suit because that's too <laughs> easy. For but, me. but it's worth mentioning. Great costume change, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's the, that's the butterfly effect of everything I do today was the black and white suit that Peter Parker stumbled on to the Beyonders world. So once mm-hmm. again, touching on the Beyonder once again here, the Beyonder led to a lot of cool things that happened in costume changes back in the 1980s. But uh, probably, I guess, like one of the ones if I wanted to go back to that era, I would probably say She-Hulk going from her just white torn shirt outfit into the Fantastic Four outfit. Mm. I think that's like what really started defining She-Hulk as a character is when she joined the Fantastic Four. Okay. And I guess she had like a purple outfit for a while too because they wanted to do that whole purple and green thing with her too as well mm. before she joined the Fantastic Four. But when she was in the blue and white and that, I don't know what it was, dude, but the blue and the green contrast looked freaking awesome on She-Hulk. And, and I think that was kind of a real defining moment in that character just becoming just like Hulk's cousin into becoming her own powerful character. Yeah. And um, I think it was an easy to define, do you know what I mean? The Fantastic Four is, in my opinion, as boring of a costume as it is. It really worked with the She-Hulk design for me. And that was really kind of cool to see She-Hulk evolve as a character by joining the Fantastic Four. And most of it was her costume, you know, transition from being just like, another Hulk knockoff into being a member of the Fantastic Four with, their, with that costume on her. Yeah. No, that's, that's cool. I mean, in blue and green, they're like, they like bring each other out, you know, as, as colors. So that's, that's probably why it works so well. That, that is cool. I mean, there's, there's something about seeing certain people like in a Fantastic Four costume, 
That's kind of cool. Yes. I mean, like, look at Spider Man in his in his paper bag. I mean, definitely one of the greatest costumes of of all time, right? I mean, it's iconic. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> the kick me costume. <laughs> Because Johnny Storm pinned the little thing yeah, on the back yeah. of his back as he yeah. left too. Yep. Yeah, I, that's, I, I know okay, a lot of people love that costume, the brown bag Spider Man. I don't. I don't. I won't pretend to like love it, but like, it's just, it's just kind of fun. Like within certain contexts, you know, because like, like when I played the Sony PS4 Spider Man game, once I unlocked that costume, I was like, how can I not like play through the game? wearing a paper bag on my head and it, and it let me, you know? Yes. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I guess it was just, you know, for the S's and G's, you know, if you, if you will there, um, definitely nothing serious. Cause I mean, y- you can't be black suit Spider-Man. I don't think. No, that's oh, impossible. Yeah. <laughs> Another, I think almost as impactful as the black suit Spider-Man on a character, in my opinion, uh-huh. is when the X-Men, ditch the original blue and gold costumes they each got their own costumes so that's like a team overhaul yeah. not just like a character but like the angel with the blue and white suit cyclops with the blue with the you know with the, just the yellow visor mm-hmm. jean gray with the green dress and the yellow i don't know if that's a domino mask you'd call i don't know what kind of mask you call those masks like yeah, that I don't, yeah, I don't know. and the beast you know kind of just a being like in a blue and red suit a little bit different than everybody else's mm-hmm. and then ice man I guess he never changed anything because he always was just iced up all the time. He was just like less frosty for some reason, less yeah. snowman-y. And, but it really kind of broke the X-Men off from a team into individual characters for the first time when they did their costume change. And yeah. I think that really was a big step for X-Men as a team book because Fantastic Four, they had everybody looking the same. Mm-hmm. X-Men had everybody looking the same. But what made the Avengers so special was that they all had their own unique look to themselves. Mm-hmm. And I really think X-Men really took that major step as a team by giving them their own identity with their own costumes and not just being Professor Xavier's students anymore. Yeah, that's a that's a great point. I never even thought of it in terms like that as like a like a team costume versus like they're still a team, but they're they're individuals in that comparison to the Avengers. Like that's that's really cool. I never thought about it in terms of that. And that's a that's a great segue because I. I wanted to bring up uh, Jean Grey because Mm -hmm. after that initial blue and yellow, while it's classic, you know, I think it's definitely one of the weakest, weakest, if not her weakest costume. And then we got the the green dress with the yellow mask. And then from there, um, you know, we got the, um, from there we got Phoenix or yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. Um, yeah, Phoenix, Dark Phoenix, the Jim Lee costume. I mean, those are some of her best costumes right there. I mean, Jean Grey is somebody as her costumes changed. Like, she had so many awesome ones after her first one. You know, how many characters yeah. can you say that? That get the transition to improve every time. Mm-hmm. I mean, white, the white Phoenix costume, like, and almost every version of, of or I, I dare say all of the Phoenix costumes have been awesome. The green one, the red one, the white one. Um, even that kind of like where it's like black, you know, across our chest and the, and the pants and, and then like that anime one and that what if one, you know, like mm-hmm. they're, gosh, it's, it's all good. You know, like yeah, she, how can you go wrong? Yeah. She's a character. They obviously have fun with designing their costumes. Mm-hmm. Even the new ones, you know, like, like even from, uh, what was it, X-Men like blue and red and her, and her modern mm-hmm costume now like even though like i see the the jim lee inspiration you know um it's just it's just good i like it super cool stuff yeah yeah um, unlike her uh counterpart there in in cyclops where his, his costumes basically sucked until like the 90s i th- i <laughs> was, was laughing <laughs> Susan's watching Turner and Hooch in the background. Oh, oh, okay. I thought she was making fun of Cyclops. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, Cyclops sucks. Yeah. This costume is yeah. terrible. <laughs> we'll just pretend like this. Yeah, I was like Cyclops. Uh, I thought you meant Madeline Pryor at there first. <laughs> 
she had a nope. cool redesign. To tell you the truth, the Goblin Queen was one of the biggest improvements on a character that was not a phoenix that I think like that was kind of a surprise because Madeline Pryor was a boring throwaway character until she became the Goblin Queen. Mm -hmm. And then being Mr. Sinister's pawn was just, you know, she was one of the the biggest surprise characters, I think, of the late 80s. Mm -hmm. was, she's a, she's a really Goblin cool character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very, very cool. And and that costume, now that you bring it up, reminds me of like also the, the Black Queen Jean yes. Grey costume, even though it's just a couple issues. Like, I mean, she's just, all of her looks, like, you know, they're statue worthy, action figure worthy, worthy like mm -hmm. hero clicks, like, you know, like they're, they're cool variants with cool stories, you know, and I, I guess that's, that's part of it, isn't it? You know, it's like yes. the, it's like how they relate to the, to the stories, right? You know, look at the, the black suit Spider-Man, you know, and, and Jean Grey, especially like, like the iconic stories that, that go along with these costumes, you know? Yeah, I, th I think the Goblin Queen's probably my favorite of all those. <laughs> not lie. It's pretty obvious, though. Why, you know? Anyway, That's not Jean Grey. I, I don't care. <laughs> well, what do you got next, Oreo Man? Um, what do I have? Literally, there's like a hundred in my brain. Mm -hmm. I know the feeling. Okay. I'm starting to pour in my head right now. I have to say... An underrated one. Well, not under. I'm gonna say underrated, but the classic Thanos costume with the gold, like I don't know what you call it, like face mask thing. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. I think his costume, his first costume, is awesome. Yeah, and I think everything after that, like they kind of tried like taking a lot of like. Slowly, I felt like they just kind of got slowly just got rid of all of the armor for whatever reason. I guess to try to r relate it to the to the movies because they didn't really use it in the movies too much. Yeah. Besides, like I'm, they, I mean, they did use armor at one point, but it was it was nothing really like the the classic mm -hmm. original uh, Thanos. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I know I, I like loved his first costume. After that, everything was just meh. But I thought his first costume was awesome. He just looked like it's like wow, like when you were fighting this guy, you're like you know, there's something, something's crazy. You know, it's like they they didn't deviate far enough for it to be like a cool change. It's just like okay, you're just trying too hard to make this like a realistic twist on on the classic costume, and it just just wasn't as fun. You and know, part of it too was like it was like his costume was made to wear an Infinity Gauntlet. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it went so well with the costume. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude, yeah, there's so many thoughts going through the head now. Going like, oh, great. What, what do we talk about next? <laughs> Which one do we hit on next? I mean, like, um, another one of my, like, transitional, like, from a costume I liked to a costume that became legendary to a costume that became forgotten on a character was Daredevil. Mm, it's which like one? The, I really like the yellow and red suit when it was Do first you? introduced. Yeah, the okay. first six issues of Daredevil. I don't know what it is about that suit, but it's kind of cool to me. Hmm. And the red suit is obviously the legendary suit that's you know still with us off and on today. But then that black and red armor suit they did with him in the '90s was just love hate relationship with that. Like it seemed like it was a complete bust amongst fans, but it still looked kind of cool. But it just wasn't meant to stay for daredevil mm -hmm. and ever since they did that change they've stuck with the classic red look or did something as similar looking to the red look costume never really deviate too much opinion on the character mm -hmm. and i think they're i think his suits are awesome but it seems like his suits are so good it doesn't ever take away from like someone saying oh i can't read daredevil because of the suit change they did to him anymore yeah for daredevil fans for me, like I, I like the uh, kind of gray and red with the little little armor on the shoulders. Like that was mm -hmm. that was the coolest. I thought it was Daredevil. Yeah, I thought it was me. a decent looking suit, but whatever mm -hmm. reason, same thing with like the black and white suit Spider Man. People didn't respond well to it because they thought mm -hmm. it was too drastically different. I go, well, too bad, dude, because that's a great suit. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? no kidding. I, the Shadowland one was my favorite. Yeah, one. I was just gonna bring that up yeah. next. Shadowland Daredevil was really cool and and an okay story. Yeah. <clears throat> that was cool. That's too with the black with the inverted red D's looked looked awesome on there. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, 
So I don't know. I don't know if this counts. Um, cause I think it's a different, I don't want to sound like an idiot. <laughs> I don't know if this is a different person, but, uh, when flash went from like, the stupid like helmet on his head thing to like the proper superhero costume. You know, I don't, I, I'm a, it's different characters though. Right. But like, that's a yeah. much better flash costume. Like, I'm sorry. I don't care. If the other one came first, you know, it's, it's iconic, you know? Yeah. The red flash costume. Yeah. As opposed to the bucket on his head with the red t-shirt and blue yeah, pants. A, yeah. To make it look like Mercury rather than Flash. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, you, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I mean, Flash isn't my cup of tea, but you know, I, I think it's uh, it's something worth um, bringing up. Speaking of uh, DC, I feel like I feel like we would be remiss if we didn't mention costume changes. Mm-hmm. That are horrible and amazing. Um, of the beloved character Robin, mm-hmm. right? There has to be some like the worst costume, maybe yeah. like ever. And then there's like probably one of the like the best DC costumes that they have, right? Am I wrong? The Nightwing, Wing costume? Like, the, the Nightwing costume's awesome, mm-hmm. right? And then you got the classic. Robin walking around in his underwear. <laughs> and I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. It's just, it's just yeah, it's, weird. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. Button up shirt. Uh, I don't know what they were doing. I don't know who thought about that. Yeah, absolutely. Me and Blade were touching on a little bit before the show. I was saying to him like, dude, I, it's, I, it's too easy, but I can't stand the Robin costume. Mm-hmm. Do you know I mean? It's like, and especially since, do you know I mean? It's like, as you said, do Dick Grayson, Nightwing costume is probably the coolest costume at DC right now. Mm. With that, with that, with the black and the blue, the Nightwing logo looks awesome. The way they yeah. finally finished it off after all the different transitions. I mean, yeah, he had the Disco Nightwing, which I think is probably one of the worst Nightwing costumes too that he started off with, like Teen Titans, with, right? Yeah, with 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 the with the up collar and all the uh-huh. gold chainmail, and it was just uh they they transitioned that really quickly mm-hmm. out of that, which was good, but. Yeah, dude. Grayson, man, dude. Talk about going through a costume evolution, 110% going from Robin all the way up to what he is now with Nightwing. Mm -hmm. Just a super, super cool costume. Speaking of DC, too, is like that. Probably one of the worst transitions for DC character was from Azrael, which I thought was a super cool costume. That gold and red one when he first appeared on the scene. Mm-hmm. Jean Paul Lavalle. Yeah. And then making him into Batman it was probably one of the worst looking Batman costumes I yeah. think I've ever seen. Because they were trying yeah. to merge his Azrael look into being Batman. And I'm mm. going, oh, dude, I have no interest in reading this anymore. And it was yep. just, I remember that whole transition. Who's going to be the new Batman? Yeah. And it turned out being Azrael. And it's like, oh, that's cool. Azrael's awesome. That'd be great. And then also you see the costume and going, oh, wow, Joe Casada, dude, with all due respect, dude, that's one design that did not come out as cool as I thought it would be coming out. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but I guess Kaksada also designed Azrael's look in the first place too. And maybe that's why they decided to let him design the Batman suit too. But, uh, I just was not a big fan of the Azrael Batman suit. Yeah, no, it's, it's no good. Um, but a, a good DC one, I think would be, cause I mean, Superman, it's iconic, whatever. I don't care about Superman, but black suit Superman. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, that's, that's cool. If we have to have Superman, you know, we, let's, let's get the, um, oh gosh, what's it called? Uh, the mullet, we got the mullet, we got the black <laughs> suit, we got the silver. I mean, how do you, how do you go wrong? You know, only the black suit makes the mullet work, right? Yes. <laughs> that's the only way you can get away with the, the mullet. <laughs> yeah. That's the, the best black suit, uh, uh, Superman. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure, like, one of the few uh, Superman comics that I read was Black Suit Superman. Oh, yeah? I think that's what got me to, like, buy it was because it was like, oh, look at this suit. Mm-hmm. It's so cool. Well, I don't I don't know how we'd have him brought up Iron Man yet. 
You know, I, I, I was just kind of, I, was, I didn't know what to say because I feel like we've talked about it before, you know? Yeah. Would you start with silver or gold? What? Does it start with silver or gold? Which silver? Silver is the best one. Silver and then gold. It's one one issue, yeah. one issue, and then it's gold. Gold one's cool too. I mean, the silver one's classic. It's my favorite one. And I always the, I always thought about getting it tattooed on me. And, and then we got the nose transition, right? The nose trans, yeah, which is the worst thing on the entire planet. The dumbest, <laughs> most, and we I know we talked about the story before, which yeah, makes yeah, it yeah, yeah. Which makes it great, yeah. right? Uh-huh. But. I couldn't stand it. Every time I was reading the comment, it was literally distracting. I would like be like looking at like, why is there a nose? It just looks so like something's <laughs> something's wrong. But he had so many cool armors. They did the the stealth armor, the space armor, where they gave him like a you know like a astronaut helmet. They were all so cool. Then they transitioned. Well, then they they had other adaptations with the war machine armor, which is, mm. I mean. Come on, that war machine armor is awesome. Yes, I mean it's black or gray or whatever color. It it, it it's awesome. And then you 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 have the more modern armors, which are are cool. I I'm not a fan of the 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 black and gold ones. The new the, that new one that they had for a while. I'm glad they it, they seem to kind of go away from that. I, I just I don't know. I just couldn't relate. I don't know. It was weird. It just felt like it was not Iron Man to me. Um. But everything else outside of that armor, I think all the armors are great. I love them all. You guys both like the Silver Centurion armor, right? Yeah, the Silver Red armor was my favorite armor for a long period of time. And I also like the Blue Stealth armor with the red eyes. Mm. Yeah, the Blue that Stealth armor is like my favorite. Awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just so different than anything else. So it's like a midnight blue that went with yeah. the red eyes. was just intimidating seeing Iron Man pull up at night. With that, uh, with that dark, 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 almost charcoal blue armor. With it's the red funny eye. when I was a kid, I was like, "What's it matter if his armor is like he's wearing armor? How is this like? Yeah. How is this helping at all? You know what I mean? I'm like so I don't remember thinking that as a kid, but it's so stealthy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Uh, <clears throat> so but I love that armor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Iron Iron Man's one were like with as many changes as you've had. I don't know that there's been that many wins, you know, for somebody who's like changes, changes, changes. And it's just like, you know, most of the time, unless you're adding a nose, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's good stuff. Oh, and there's Hulkbuster. <laughs> don't forget about it. Hulkbuster's. Oh yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. What do you guys think about uh, the future foundation? Fantastic four. I like that one more than some of the other ones. Cause that said too, I'm not a yeah. huge fantastic four. Um, fan of their costume i mean once again i said earlier it looked awesome on she hulk because i think it was a different transition from Mm -hmm. just normal putting on pajamas it felt like into her actually having a fantastic four costume because it feels like everybody else that wore like reed and sue look like they're wearing pajamas when they're wearing the fantastic four outfit fair enough and uh thing obviously you know he's all rock so he's just got the you know the the singlet i guess and johnny storm's just uh running around low torch all over the place so he doesn't have a fantastic four costume which i love the unstable molecules concept of like why does johnny always go back to a normal costume oh because he's wearing fire retardant things that uh don't 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 catch fire when he turns into the human torch but the future foundation costume i think what i liked most about it was that's when spider-man was in the fantastic four Mm-hmm. And he had a future foundation costume, Spider Man, and it looked freaking awesome. I loved an inverse of the white and black suit Did that you? they had during the future okay. foundation. That was, that so was I got a little perspective for the future foundation costumes because Spider Man had such a cool future foundation transition at that point. Wow, nice, nice. Yeah, I yeah, mean, I, like, I don't really like white as a color, you know, on, on costume stuff. So, like, I mean, it was a cool story, you know, like, whatever. And it was, it was interesting to see Doom kind of lumped in there a little bit too for me it's kind of like take it or leave it you know either i don't have i don't have strong feelings how about that i think that's that's why i'll leave it for me you know well their 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 costume originally is kind of boring i mean it's fine but it's like it's nothing something great so it's like when you change it to something in my opinion something that's not that great to something that's also whatever Mm -hmm. like it's not you can't it's hard to have an opinion about it 
Yeah. The Spider-Man one was cool. He would definitely had the coolest of all of them. But outside of that, all right, kind of boring. I I want to bring up uh I want to bring up one of the worst costume changes probably in in superhero history. You know, I, I don't know how many more we have here, but I I want to bring this up. How about Thor's 90 90s costume where his like midriff is showing? You remember that? Like it was it was brief, I think, but like it was just such bad nine. It was just like I don't know, like black leather. His midriff is showing, and he's got like brown straps and his long hair and giant shoulder pads. Like just, yeah, bad. It was kind of embarrassing. Stupid <laughs> here. Like I don't know, like Fabio or something. I can't even know what to. What to even compare it to? I don't know. It was like it was like they were trying to do like classic Ms. Marvel with Thor. <laughs> oh, let's give him a midriff. He looks cute. <laughs> oh, horrible. Maybe we maybe we'll see this costume in Thor: Love and Thunder. That's my that's my Blade's crystal ball. Is that they'll they'll be a Is reference that in the movie? Yeah, because I mean we saw all those interviews with Taika Waititi saying how he. He did every joke and gag that he wanted to do, and he he ruined the movie. So I guarantee you that uh, that they'll they'll do this just even if it's just one quick scene. I'm calling it now. I guarantee you, he ruined the movie. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've got one of the but- best costume changes next for Marvel. Okay, right. and okay. It's, okay, in my opinion, and I I don't want to know if you guys agree with me. Okay, you guys ready? Mohawk Storm. Ah, that's uh, interesting. Super popular. You oh, super popular. Storm. That was that was the very PC answer there. Ken does not like Mohawk Storm, right? It's not bad. I mean, it was it was just the the reasoning behind it. I thought was horrible. What being? Did, did what? you know why she did it? I don't. I don't think I do. Okay, because she was more or less. Uh, she decided she was going to become leader of the Morlocks. And after oh. she defeated Callisto to be leader of the Morlocks, yeah. she goes, I got to look like someone they respect. And so she put oh. on black leather and the black vest and then gave herself a shaven mohawk. Oh. And I go, okay, I guess that works. But why can't you just defeating Callisto? Because I think Storm's one of the coolest looking characters mm-hmm. in the X-Men too. I mm-hmm. love her costume, her original costume with the white flowing hair, black cape that kind of connects to her wrist and yeah. You know, her back, and it was yeah. just the gold, the black, and the white all mixed together. I mean, I, I love Storm's costume. I think Storm's got one of the coolest costumes in X-Men history. Totally. And uh, But to uh, just kind of more or less, I think that was just the whole 80s thing. Same thing happened to Dazzler, as we just talked about. Yeah. Yeah. Cut her hair and make her 80s relevant. Long shot, unfortunately, was a product of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Mm-hmm. He was created in the 80s. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then yeah. he was he was given a Michael Jackson outfit that unfortunately was more fashion based than practicality based. Yeah. And the one mullet with, you know, the party Joe Dirt haircut. Mm-hmm. And, you know, unfortunately, when that era passed, he was no longer the heartthrob they needed him to be. And they invented Gambit to take his spot. Yeah. And, and with all due respect, I feel like, you know, even speaking of Dazzler again, Dazzler ran off to the Mojo verse with Longshot. As yeah. a way to write him out of the storyline, because Jim Lee liked Gambit better than he liked Longshot, mm-hmm. and it was just uh, unfortunate that the '80s. You know, if you were created in the '80s, man, dude, you're probably not very popular right now when it comes to the um, the costume design, unless it really worked for you. Do you know what I mean? Like they did something that worked with the costume design. I mean, is there any other '80s characters that they didn't rechange the costume after oh, they did man. the design in the '80s? <sighs> That's that's hard. Um, like even Colossus had the Russian yeah. costume he did uh-huh. for him, like where they changed up. Like he, he didn't have the large shoulder pads anymore. Mm-hmm. They switched him into that sleek red. Do you know what I mean? Like that where it was almost like the more of the, um, the Russian, I guess, the red look for him. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. Being, being like a red soldier look to him. And yep. Kitty Pride, man, that eighties costume. She was wearing the leotard and the the sash mm-hmm. and the blue the blue jacket. Do you yep. know what I mean? The members only looking jacket that yep. she had, and that it was, was you know taken away pretty quickly too. And so, which is good. Yeah, like a lot of those eighties costumes, except for the black suit Spider Man, none of them are remembered fondly. Mm-hmm. 
yeah. even then was hated back in that time. It was funny because it was more of it's ahead of its time mm-hmm. than it was the fact that it was accepted. It was not accepted because it was so drastically different. But now it, it, it lasted the test of time because they never bring back any of those other costumes except Spider-Man's when it comes to the, the 1980s looks. I mean, maybe the U.S. agent with John Walker. That was a late eighties one. That's a pretty cool costume. That Steve Rogers but, transition. From the but it was, America but it was based on that. Yeah. 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 So that's, and so those are the only two costumes from the eighties that I think that are still somewhat relevant in today's comic book storytelling. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess cause like even Raven was like a little different, you know, um, rogue, her Starfire. first costume wasn't that good. Yeah. yeah Starfire. Yeah, definitely. Um, Night okay. Wings, okay. I got one. I got one mm-hmm. in my quick Google search here. How about Emma Frost? Like it's still oh, the wow. same, right? Yeah. But that was late. Was that 1979 or was that 80? Maybe it was really early 80. So Dazzler too. Dazzler was 1980 as well. So her first one stuck. Yeah. But that mid eighties between 84 and 88, mm-hmm. all those costumes are forgettable. Even Black Cat had her costume changed during that time for the first time. And it was yeah, you can't horrible touch- idea. Horrible. Can't touch the original black cat. Everything sucked after the original black cat. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm just gonna be honest. That's why yeah. they keep bringing it back. It's everyone. Nobody likes it. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to see all this other nonsense that you goggles and eyeballs on the middle of her costume and whatever other nonsense. Where's the white mm-hmm. fur? Just it needs to look nice. It just needs to be like sleek and and sure it's like a little like bougie, but like that's kind of like what she is. You know what I mean? She's mm-hmm. She's extra. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what one thing about Storm though that you know I feel like Blade. I don't know. Have you seen uh, Storm's Extreme X Men? You know, that's a oh, cool. Yeah, she was like yeah. that was yeah. like she's like wearing basically Warbird's outfit though. Yeah, yeah. LaRosa but did some I've, cool costumes for mm-hmm. for that run. Definitely. And as uh, you know, probably like a one comic thing, her. Uh, her wedding day costume is amazing. Yeah. When she married uh, T'Challa. Mm-hmm. Wow. Like I, I'm trying to show the picture of it, but you can't. Mm-hmm. Uh, that you'd have to, awesome. you'd have to look it up, but it's yeah. like, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's cool. <sighs> yeah, I liked Rogue's red costume that LaRocca designed, Salvador LaRocca designed during that extreme X-Men run too. the red. And I think it was red and blue. Of where Rogue had like the it was mostly a crimson red color, and I think it had blue accents if I remember correctly. And Gambit, I think, had a different colored costume during that run too. But LaRocca did a really good job redesigning that suit for those. Mm, uh, that. I just Google it. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah, that wasn't bad. I mean, to me, like Extreme X Men, like because of the time period it came out too. Like I felt like it was trying to inspire the movies, but mm-hmm. they just the movies just didn't care. <laughs> because <laughs> they, they didn't even do anything they, they stuck with their non-costumes and speaking of x-men we have to have to have to bring up somebody who's had great costume changes ever since his first costume that's wolverine you know like yeah. his first costume's cool but i mean he got into his classic yellow with the bigger i don't know what you call those those eye ear things but then you got the brown one you know i like the brown one the brown one's the best one you know, as far as those more, that's an, is that, that's an eighties one, isn't it? That's an eighties costume yeah, change, isn't it? Yes. Yep. Early eighties. So. Yeah. Cause that was like, that was John Byrne. One of the last things he did before he left the X-Men issue number one thirty nine. He gave Wolverine that new costume. Yep. That's, that's good stuff. And his, uh, the, uh, oh my gosh, the weapon X costumes. Mm-hmm. I know it's not really a costume, but the yeah. weapon X look or X force, you know, with the, the black yeah, and gray the black and silver. Yep. Oh, black and gray, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Either I mean it's yeah, I mean, yeah, we don't we don't know. Whatever it is. Something like that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um do you guys have any 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 other ones we wanna wanna bring up before we wrap this up? Well, I think I could go on all day with this, to be honest. I mean Totally. Totally. Okay, and I just okay, one more I have to say real quick is just Blade. Like his first costume's cool, but like now it's it's iconic, it's definitive, you know, it's what the movies are using and like we came a long way from his like seventies kind of you know, colorful whatever to like it's a little more like I'm I'm in the shadows hunting vampires now, you know, with with whatever. Um anyway. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh. Well, I, uh, one more. 
Okay. <laughs> it's a costume that they don't use anymore, and, it, and it's kind of like, I hate that they don't use it, is uh, Gamora. Uh, Her original costume is uh, awesome. Yeah. But now it's just like, try to make it like the movies, and it's just not. Mm. It's not cool, and I feel like it doesn't. When she was wearing that original costume, it was like she's supposed to be the deadliest woman in the universe. And it's like, like you could feel like she kind of carried that where it's like the newer costumes is just like, okay, yeah, you're so scary. I don't know. I don't know. It's just not the same. Mm. I do have one more popped in my head too as well. Okay. All right. I love it. I love it. I inspired everybody. Always was a big fan of the costume, but I feel like they had to make the change because she got so influenced by the movies. was Harley Quinn's classic black and red Uh... costume. Great. Like her other costumes were very Margot Robbie influenced, yes. I feel. And I go, oh, it's like, is Harley Quinn Margot Robbie or is Margot Robbie playing Harley Quinn? Mm-hmm. And I kind of felt like they transitioned Harley Quinn to be more Margot Robbie than she was her original character in that yeah. costume. And yeah. super cool costume. Just so simple, black and red, you know, almost like a, you know, a pattern effect on one half is the black side, one half is the red side. And it mm-hmm. just works perfectly as a full you know, a full suit, which I thought was really awesome with a little domino mask for her face. And that was it. Yeah. And it's sort of, it's sort of, and without being too specific, it was yeah. sort of like, like a reverse reason as to why they changed some of the other costumes, you know, and I'll just kind of leave it at that. But yeah. That's a, that's a great, that's a great point. Um, and, and I think I agree with that. Like classic Harley, you know, is, you know, is what we know and love. And now it's just, yeah, it's, it's absolutely right. You know, it's, it's one of the the most successful characters that came out of the the DC movies, right? So now we have to make sure something makes sense, you know. And she did a, she did a really good job playing the Harley Quinn personality. I just think it was something that was made to make her feel comfortable on screen. Yeah, yeah, I can look see that. wise. And at least we had the one shot with the classic costume, right? And yes, and so was, that's true. It was, yeah. there was there was one shot. <clears throat> All right, but I think that's about all the time we have for today. Um, we, I'm sure we can go on and on. Maybe, you know, if this episode does well, maybe we'll do a follow-up episode and, and talk more about some of the best and worst uh, costumes. What? Yeah, one more. Sorry, I oh. just thought of, like, three more. And I was just right. like, oh. You want to squeeze one in? Black Bolt. What is... His actually, costume's amazing. Mm-hmm. Okay, what was his... What was the costume change? Oh, it doesn't have to be. No, I'm not talking about a change. Just his. Oh, his you're just saying it's a good costume. Yeah, we were talking about costume his changes. Costumes, it makes sense. Uh, yes, well, I thought it was black. just best and worst costumes. Changes. <clears throat> oh well, his first one's the best. It's so good, didn't need a change. How about that? <laughs> now I got a quick one too. What about the Hulk going from gray to green back to gray? Mm. Was that necessary to go back to gray Hulk again? And Mr. Like is Mr. Fix It one of the coolest Hulks or one of the worst yes. Hulks? No, Mr. Yeah, Fix It's one of the best. Coolest. Yeah. If not the best. I like Gray Hulk. Kind of- how did we have like how many Hulk movies and none of them were gray? Yeah, I don't understand that either. Like not even one of them. I thought it would be great to have him come back as Mr. Fix It rather than Smart Hulk. Um yes. I <laughs> I like, think that needs so to be next. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> right. If half of the world got destroyed and you're depressed, like, would you become smart or would you become a bouncer in Vegas? <laughs> exactly, dude. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I. I think that. Yeah, that would have been. I think that would have been more fun. Like, okay, we have to go get Banner. Where is he? He kind of went off the deep Vegas. end here. <laughs> <laughs> they go to a casino. <laughs> You need to leave. <laughs> that would have been so much more fun, you know. We, we still could have Professor Hulk later, you know. Yeah, but That'd be great. Yeah, so yeah, I I love Mister Fix It. I, there, there needs to be more Mister um, Fix It. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, we're gonna keep this a little quote short tonight. Um, but let us know, you know, what are some of you, what do you think are some of the best or, or worst costume changes in comic books? You know, do you agree, disagree with any of us? You know, let us know on social media. We're at Nightcap Chat. You can find us at Nightcap Chat on Facebook and you can let us know on Twitter, but we don't really post on there and Nightcap underscore chat on Instagram. Ken. Well, thanks again, you guys, for another awesome show like costumes. Man, dude, what a great topic. Thanks. Can't wait to hear your guys' opinions. You can find us, find me at Drawn to Comics on the corner of 58th Avenue in Glendale, 
on all forms of social media, social over Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and on drawnacomics.com. Thank you very much, Lance. And you can catch me on Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram at Tales of Lance. Um, this was fun, guys. And I just came up with like six more costume changes, and maybe we'll do this another time. <laughs> seems like, two, yeah, yes. seems like, seems like we are. <laughs> Like Adam Morlock. But we appreciate you all taking the time to listen. And Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, we really. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, we can't I'm going to one in. Jeez, dude, I'm on the spot now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, it doesn't really count, but Snake Eyes. Why doesn't that count? Because it's a, it's, it's a toy more than a comic, but there is tons of comics. There's a comic. On it. Like when you went from the just a regular black costume with the Uzi and the binoculars to mm-hmm. the that armored with the visor where he looked like he was half soldier, half black ninja. knight looking character, yeah. ninja. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was uh, just by far one of the coolest costume changes I think I've ever seen. See, I mean, I think this proves that we can do another episode. Um, so, so we'll probably follow this up and we'll probably do a even deeper dive, you know, into some characters. I, I already, yeah, I, I just have more ideas too now. Uh, but before I extend this episode another hour, we appreciate you all taking the time to listen. We love you. Be safe. And we'll catch you all next week. Thank you. Have a good week. <laughs>